So this is how we think about kind of essential ingredients. And that's all well and good, but let's start to look at what happens when we apply some materials and what shading means. So next, we're gonna dive inside of this thing called base constant shading. Okay, so what, what gives Matt? What does that all mean? Help me understand what's going on. So we're gonna start with a couple of our essential ingredients again. We're gonna add a geometry to our network. We're also gonna add a camera, right? We wanna have a perspective to view this thing from. We also wanna render this thing. Remember, a render is a top. It's a texture. We've gotta convert this thing into textures. And this time we're not gonna add a light just yet. Now, uh, this seems, you know, this is a nice start, um, but it is missing something. What's going on here exactly? So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna move inside of my geometry. I'm gonna get rid of this torus. I am going to instead add a rectangle. And this rectangle, I'm actually gonna leave it size as one by one. I like that just fine for now. Oh, it didn't show up. Well, what's going on? Well, if we head back in here, we've got to remember, we've got a display flag, right? We use that to be able to see it in the viewport or in our geo viewer, geometry viewer. But if I want to render the thing, there's also a render flag. So if I turn on my display and render, now I can both see it here in my viewport and I can see it show up over here in the render. In my geo, I'm going to go ahead and set its scale Right, it's X dimension to be 1.778. You can imagine that's starting to look an awful lot like a screen might look. I'm gonna zoom into this just a little bit. And then I'm gonna go to materials. Now we haven't talked about materials yet. This is actually how we uh, influence how we're doing some, um, how we're applying a material to a piece of geometry, how we kind of get some light color texture, all sorts of stuff onto this particular piece of uh, of geometry here inside of touch, touch Designer. And in this case, I want to add a constant. I'm going to take my constant, I'm going to drag it on top of my geo, I'm going to head over to the render page, and I'm going to drop it on material. And now I've got this white rectangle. Constant shading, right? When we have a constant, we're not doing any lighting calculations. This is an emissive kind of lighting. It's one of the cheapest lighting formats we have or cheapest uh, materials that we have, because we don't, uh, we kind of skip a bunch of the lighting calculations that we might otherwise do. Um, in addition to being really cheap, which is really great, uh, this is a slick way to do a bunch of kind of projection mapping stuff that we might want to do, right? If we're not interested in kind of crazy, it, well, I should say, if all of our work is done inside of our texture, right? So let's, for example, add a movie file in. So we'll add, we've got our banana here, but let's say instead that we switch to something more like, I think I want, what do I want today? Let's do our oil drums. Actually, no, let's go to nature. Let's pick one of these videos. Uh, I like this one a lot, this movie too. Let's do our due diligence. We'll attach this to a null in case we want to make any changes, who knows? We might decide that we want to. I'm gonna take this null, I'm gonna bring it over to my constant, apply it as a color map, right? All right, so now what I have here is I have a, I have my texture, or I have my, actually my, my movie, right, which is a texture, it's a texture operator. It's applied as a constant, right, that's the material type, so it's emissive. I'm not getting any shading that's involved here. And then it's applied to my geometry, so it's just this rectangle. If I was to point this out of a projector at this point, right, if we're gonna just point this at a wall, I'd end up with a nice uh, kind of rectangle that was coming out of it. That's great. Well, you know, part of the way that we work at Obscura, and we talked about this quite a bit, is that we start with a piece of geometry that represents how the world looks. Right? And then we manipulate our camera. We move our camera into the position of our projector. So we're looking at the world. Or we're looking at the virtual world with a virtual camera in the same configuration as we are looking at a real object with a projector. Right? So we kind of think of 
our virtual space and our virtual camera as being analog analogous to the actual, uh, the actual surface and the actual projector that we're using pointed at it. And what that gets us is that we can start to think about moving our camera, right? So maybe this camera is over here to the right and uh, maybe it is kind of rotated here, here in this uh, Y dimension, right? We can see here with some perspective that we're getting some kind of corner printing action that's happening. And let's change our geometry viewer here. Right, so we're changing the viewing angle of our camera, and this is actually doing a lot of our distortion for us. This is actually handling lots of the complexity of our projection mapping, right? So if, we're, if we imagine that this is pointed at a building, right, so this is our building over here and our projectors over on this other building, and we need to maintain the fact that there's a vanishing point, right? Like as the building or the wall moves away from us, it gets smaller. And I want to kind of maintain my relationship between my camera or my projector and my surface. I could do that the hard way, right? I know certainly if it was um, as simple as this, I don't need to do kind of all of this rigmarole. I could just corner pin it, right? I could just kind of like move the points of my geometry or move the points of my texture around to kind of corner pin it into the place that I want. That's certainly something that I could do. Um, that's a fine way to can handle this problem if we have a very simple piece of geometry like, you know, just this rectangle. But if instead we're dealing with some complex curved wall that's got crazy pieces of uh, architecture that we also want to map, this particular approach is what we use to solve that problem. And this is just the simplest kind of representation of it. Okay, that's kind of like a, a blah, 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 you know, <laughs> lots of distraction uh, and stuff in this particular case. So why a constant, right? Why the constant material? The constant material in this particular case, because all of the... Um, all the interesting work is actually already done here inside of my texture. So I'm not worried about doing any kind of lighting or any of those other pieces of the puzzle. Wow, it just started raining very hard. I wonder if you guys can hear that. Um, for me, or for us, you know, this saves us the step of additional complex lighting calculations and lighting effects, because in many cases we're not necessarily uh, in a position where we need that for a particular installation. We need that for some events, but we don't need that for all events. So if we're doing just simple projection mapping where all of the effects are already handled in the actual asset itself, then this particular technique is just perfect for us. Whew. Sorry, that was a big, long, crazy tangent just to show off the fact that we could uh, do some uh, kind of like constant uh, materials uh, on uh, on our shading, just constant shading. Whew. All right.